Hello, this is take two of what I was going to talk about today. I'm going to call the Freedom Army. Now, just before I get to the Freedom Army thing here, it's take two because I forgot to turn on the phantom power for this new mic of mine, and it doesn't pick up anything without the phantom power on, apparently. So, I'll try it again. Now, what I mean by an army, Freedom Army, is not a literal army in terms of people running around with uh, tanks and mortars and uh, ICBMs and so on. It is a growing number of people who are sort of red-pilled or woke to freedom. And I've been a member, of, not a member, I've been associated, there's not really an organization, associated with what I would broadly call a freedom movement for the last number of years, as you may have known. And there, I've just noticed that more and more and more people are getting the, the idea that there's a tyrannical nature to some people and there's a freedom nature to some people and people are balkanizing into... Where they, where they believe their camp is, right? Because basically on one side of the spectrum, the freedom type people, we believe in individual liberty, which is the logical way to liberty. And the other side sees the collective road to liberty, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever because as I've talked about before, that's an approach that a, a builder might take that they're focusing on the integrity of a brick wall rather than at first focusing on the integrity of the bricks because if you have really shitty bricks that are going to fall apart, there's no sense building a wall with that because then your wall's going to fall apart because the essential ingredient of that wall, being the bricks, has low integrity and is not built up strong. So to build a strong society, we must build strong individuals. And strong individuals are those who have maximum amount of freedom. Because this is proven to be the case. Every time we focus on collectivism, we end up with thousands of people in ditches and having to bury them because they disagree with whoever it is or they disagree with the collective. And that's where you get innovation and so on, is people who step out of the malaise of the collective. So it's, that's, in a nutshell, how I'd describe what the, the impetus behind the freedom movement is, is this individuality, right? But one of the things about this army is that it's a growing number and a lot of people are posting stuff on the internet and of course, there's this whole tech censorship that's going on, and they're going after the big players. But the thing is, it's very difficult for them to go after the little guys like us, who we number in the thousand, perhaps, and perhaps in the millions, who are posting, you know, con posting content that adds up to a lot of content. And not only posting content, but sharing existing content. And, uh, and maybe even reposting existing content. I think of a guy like Alex Jones, who's basically deplatformed off of the internet, essentially. Most of the internet, it's at least the tech side of the, the tech, the, uh, the, the, the tech, like the big, the big tech giant sites. And I'm not saying I agree with all of what Alex Jones says, not even a majority of it, or even a, whole, a little bit of it, but he's pointing in the direction of liberty, in the direction of freedom. So therefore, I would give the thumbs up to him. But here's the thing, he's deplatformed, but what people are doing is they're reposting and sharing his content back onto these, you know, and of course it has to get kicked off again. So it creates this horrendous amount of work within the tech uh, policing to continue to purge all these people, millions and millions and millions of people. It becomes very expensive for them, and therefore for the, for the new tech that's rising up, who's, you know, who are, you know, other platforms that are not so tech sensor happy, it makes it easier for them to compete in the marketplace because they're not having to employ thousands and thousands of sensors and all kinds of bots and everything to continually chase people around. And therefore, there's this balancing out, hopefully that can take place. Now, if you look at somebody like me, for example, a uh, very small operator, you, you, you might be watching this video and notice that it's got 10 views or 5 views or 4 views, I don't know, but not very many views. But here's the thing, right? I've got thousands of videos, all with very few views, but it adds up. So consequently, if you look at this, if you're watching this on the Coffee Chat or the Flat Billy Steve uh, YouTube channel, you'll see that there's close to 50,000, as I'm, this is February to 2019, there's close to 50,000, I think 48 or 49,000 views on this channel. Not a lot. I mean, many, many of the big players, that's, their, that's how many views they get the first day they post something on one video. But that's 50,000 views I wouldn't have gotten had I not done this. Now, I'm not saying that's 50,000 different people 
and the, those, all, the, all those people don't watch my full videos. In fact, the average is about two minutes, I believe, that people watch my videos, and my, well, most of my videos are, you know, five to ten minutes. So, okay, but so two minutes on average. And some of my videos got, a couple of them got up to 2,000 views, and some got two views, you know. So somewhere in between, uh, on an average, is where they're falling. Not on an average, but on a, a median a median amount. That's where they're falling. And that's pretty significant because it adds up. And, and of course, this is just one of my YouTube channels, and it's just one platform. I can think of another platform that I used for a number of years. It was called, it was a dot webs. It was coffeechat.webs, I believe. That website, it was a blog that I was doing while I was doing coffee chat for years, which was in a, a live discussion forum in various different cities. And that, I believe, in total got over 500,000 views in terms of people viewing. I don't know who, it were, I don't know who was watching them, but you know, somebody got to know about it. We were interviewed by a couple of media outlets and people started to come in and read about what we were talking about. You know, that's hundreds of thousands of people. And then my Facebook, when I did my walk of 8,000 kilometers, people joined in on that. They shared it and whatnot. It's hard to tell how many people, maybe thousands. And I did live presentations about freedom when I was doing that, various different locations from coast to coast. And over the years, I've done, you know, close to 300 public presentations, not necessarily about freedom, but associated with it in some way in terms of individual empowerment, personal growth and what all. That's all related to freedom. I can think of even going way back to 2008, 2007, even up to 2010, I did a, an online blog about, about a form of weight loss. It was called uh, Flat Belly Feeling. And I had people from all over the world join that. And I think I had a, up to a six or 8,000 subs at one point, way back then. And a lot, of people, a lot of people saw that. And in fact, I compiled it into a book called Free Your Inner Genie, one of my books there. And now use that as a, as a prop when I do presentations for uh, self-empowerment and whatnot. So you see, it's, it's, we, 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 have a lot to, we have a lot to be hopeful for. I know there's a lot of, it's, it's, it's possible to get, you know, sort of, uh, to lose our encouragement for what's going on because we see all these people being deplatformed. And yet, at the same time, there are thousands of us who are little guys. We can think of us as like a little army of free speech advocates who are constantly posting stuff. Yes, some of us get taken down. Yes, some of us have to rise up and, and by the way, post on other channels like BitChute and whatever that are more, you know, freedom of speech friendly. But there's so much content out there. Thousands of us creating, you know, unique and original content and, and also sharing and reposting other people's content and it's it has to make a difference because you think about the amount of energy that a tech giant has to employ thousands of people and bots and algorithms and all that stuff they have to come up with to try to police this ever-changing ground of what's allowed what's what's tolerable speech it's an impossible central planning idea that with thousands of us constantly posting as long as we keep that up we are going to win in the long term. So that's a good thing to look forward to. Because at the end of the day, we all want a better quality of life. And the more freedom that we can have, the more individual liberty we can have, the more we, we have the ability to support the liberty and freedoms of others and help those throughout the world who are stuck in this malaise of socialism and collectivism, which they think somehow benefits them. But in the long run, objectively, it doesn't. Because if you look at throughout the world, what creates progress are the rebels who step, step out of line from the collective and stride into a new territory and innovate. They innovate in art, they innovate in literature, they innovate in technology, they innovate in ideas of relationship, inter, uh, intercommunication and what have you. They innovate and they're all pilloried by the mainstream of their times in the beginning, as are we. So, you know, uh, there's an old guy, Gary Halbert, who I like to... Uh, read about sometimes he's an old marketer and he was you know he was criticized at the time but he I remember him saying one time you know what if we have we gotten to lunchtime and we haven't insulted somebody we're not doing our job the, the reality is that we're always going to insult somebody but the thing is we got to stay with the truth and freedom 
And the idea of individual liberty rubs a lot of people the wrong way, but it doesn't mean we have to stop talking about it. It's important. And the more of us who are out there talking about it, the more impossible it is for those who want to control us to actually control us. Because it gets to the point where it's they're spending so much effort trying to whack-a-mole every one of us down. Every time they knock one of us down, three more of us pop up. Well, that's an impossible game to win. And so far, I think we're winning one little message at a time. Here I am, you're, you're looking at this video, maybe it's got five views. But that's five views that I wouldn't have had had I not taken the moment to sit down and talk to you today. So Steve here again, great chatting. Hope you enjoyed uh, or I hope you appreciate uh, the message here today. And please like, subscribe, and share. And become, by all means, become part of this little Freedom Army, which is constantly growing and putting out the, idea of, the ideas of individual liberty for the betterment of each and every one of us, yes, and all of us combined. Talk again soon. Bye for now.